Hello and welcome to another episode of The Legend of Nobunaga. This week it looks like we're going to be facing the final battle against the Azai clan, the Battle of Odani Castle, a, a big siege battle in fact. I actually thought this was quite a good stage in the game, I rather enjoyed playing it, uh, but we'll have a look at it in a second. So this is Nobunaga's final encounter with the Azai clan. We've seen the Azai clan many times before in The Legend of Nobunaga. We can see we're forced to take Nobunaga and Hideyoshi, and Nagamasa Asai is the enemy commander. An indecisive Nobunaga finally determines to destroy the fiercely resisting Azai clan. He quickly moves to surround the Azai main base at Odani Castle. Within that castle was the figure of Oichi, wife to Nagamasa and sister to Nobunaga. So that's going to be a dilemma. What are we going to do about Oichi? So Nobunaga, I guess he probably wanted to save her, but We'll see, he's going to act pretty ruthlessly in this cutscene. Come on! Think about it! I cannot turn my back on what is right. I am prepared to die with honor. At the very least, send Lady Oichi and your children to safety! Please leave us. Go. <sighs> Looks like Nagamasa isn't going to give up his family to Nobunaga. I'll explain what really happened, obviously, soon enough. To stop now. No quarter will be given. Somebody, give me a plan to take Odani Castle. In that case, if you start a fire at the base of the mountain, with the wind's aid, the mountain will burn, and the castle will fall. But then, Lady Oichi and the children will also surely die. It cannot be helped. Uh, 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 my lord! Master Zai! He says he'll fight to the end! Make ready to burn them out! Wait, my lord! I have a plan to win this battle! We can move in and separate the main sections! Cut off, they will have no chance! They'll have to surrender to us! With this, we can move in and save Lady Oichi! Yes, that's perfect, monkey! My, my lord! lord. Alright, that's how we'll do it. It was a very vague plan from Hideyoshi there, but... Indeed, Hideyoshi showing his genius. Uh, I quite like those cutscenes because it showed Hideyoshi's uh, negotiation and military genius, or at least it referenced them. Let us begin. According to our scouts, this is the current situation. So before I talk about the real Siege of Odani, let's see what the level has in store for us. We shall win this battle if we defeat the enemy commander Nagamasa Azai. Azai is located here. A unit will penetrate at this point and isolate this complex. So we're going to be using two teams, one entering from the front and one infiltrating. Lord Nobunaga, leave the raid to me! I swear to bring Lady Oichi safely back! Hmm. My lord, how do you wish us to deploy? I think we can trust Hideyoshi to bring Oichi back. Earlier in the game we saw that Hideyoshi actually has a, a little bit of a thing for Oichi, Nobunaga's sister. So he is uh, unusually inspired to try and save her. Uh, so you can see down here, outside the castle, there's actually another section of the map which isn't really related to the castle, and we're going to check that out during the level. Um, you can see Hideyoshi is forced to deploy with Toshie and Koroku up here, so luckily Toshie and Koroku are quite high level for me, so uh, it's not a problem to be forced to take them. And there's a few enemy units scattered about. Lots of uh, basically chambers separated by gates, some of which cannot be passed through without meeting certain conditions. So quite an interesting little level layout. Um, not too difficult to deal with though, I guess they could have made it more complicated. I decided to take Kicho and Masanori as Nobunaga's companions. I could have taken Katsuye because he was a high level, but I decided to give Masanori some battle experience. The conditions are strange. This second one, open the locked door by defeating an officer with the key. Uh, that sort of seems strange. Uh, it doesn't really tell you who it is, and I don't remember in the level if I actually do it or not. I guess we'll find out played this level a, a while back so I can't completely remember what happens. But anyway, let's do it. I've given attack orders. Let's see what happens. With this deployment we will destroy the enemy. Katsuye is confident as always. Our council is over. Blow the horns. We ride to war soon. Sir. And we're off. Let Odani be sieged. Let's see if we can save Oichi. It'd be nice if he can. She's a very good looking gal. Oichi, you poor soul. We must attack and take Odani! Forward for glory! 
Massive delay on the subtitles there. So, gonna go get a bit of glory. So the first thing I decided to do was move off to the east, not actually attacking the castle, but checking out this big area outside the castle. And you'll see if you watch my progress with the level that this proves not to be a particularly helpful thing to do. So while I do this anyway, let's talk about the real Siege of Odani. It's actually not too different from how the game presents it. It's pretty accurate. Uh, a lot of levels recently have been very inaccurate, but this one's pretty damn good. You can also see there's some sort of strange glitch that as I move down on the map, uh, some sort of strange image starts to appear that's obviously below the map on the image palette that it's drawing from. I'm not really sure what that is. I was checking if Hideyoshi had infiltrated yet, but it seems you have to just wait some arbitrary period of time for him to show up. So for now I'm just going to walk around the bottom of the map. So the real life story, Nobunaga has actually already been sieging Odani since before the last battle against Asakura. So last week on Legend of Nobunaga, we saw the end of the Asakura vengeance. clan with the defeat of Yoshikagi. Nobunaga had actually been sieging Odani Castle before he did this, and Asakura had actually been marching to try and break the siege. Nobunaga left a screening force to, to do the siege while he was away, so basically the besieged force didn't really realise that they had got a chance to escape whilst Nobunaga's main force was away. But anyway, regardless, Nobunaga comes back and the situation's pretty dire for the Ezai. They're heavily outnumbered, uh, at least double, and Nobunaga had at least double the amount of Ezai troops. Plus he had a, a good sieging position and could cut off their supply. And Ezai pretty quickly realised he was going to lose. Um, it was actually Hideyoshi who had command of the siege, so I guess it's perhaps a nod towards that were given in the cutscene, but a lot of battles Nobunaga wasn't actually present at, and this is one of them. Um, but he was present at another battle, which I believe this level in the game is also referencing, which I'll explain the meaning of that later. Let's stick simply to the Siege of Odani for now. So there's this big siege of the castle, and Nobunaga sends messengers to Nagamasa Azai saying, Can you give Oichi back? Oichi is Nobunaga's sister, married to Azai. Nobunaga doesn't want her to perish in the fighting, despite in the cutscene earlier, he seemed fairly willing to have her die so he could burn down the castle. Uh, by the way, there was no plan to burn down the castle in real life. The It was always going to be a traditional siege where you just uh, try and defeat the defenders and occupy the castle. Um, the fire aspect is actually, in my opinion, a reference to another event that happens historically around the same time, which Nobunaga was involved in, which the game doesn't otherwise mention. It's potentially a nod towards that. Uh, but anyway, the siege itself was pretty uneventful. Uh, unless there's, there's certain legends connected to the siege which make it seem more eventful warrior. than it possibly could have been. Basically, Oichi was released in real life, uh, so Nagamasa let her go. Uh, whereas in the cutscenes earlier, we saw Hideyoshi attempting to persuade him to do so and failing, so that's one difference between the game and real life. Um, also, there are three children. Oichi had three children with Nagamasa. I've actually mentioned before on Legend of Nobunaga, uh, there were three children and they were famous for having political marriages. We can see and here that Lord like Hisamasa, who is uh, Azai's father, is very wealthy and hid his treasure somehow outside the castle. Now this made me think there must be some sort of secret area around this big village section I'm in now. So I'm going to continue to search and I don't believe I'm going to find anything. Uh, whether there was something or not, I don't know. Um, if you know any better, please inform me. I don't know what I was looking for. It's kind of annoying. Especially because you receive points for your time scroll on the level, and I was wasting time down there, not really achieving anything, so I was getting a little bit edgy. But anyway, um, I've pretty much explained what happened in the Siege of Odani. Uh, I guess you could fill in the blanks yourself, really. So Oichi and her three children are released. Nagamasa stays behind, and he pretty much knows he's going to lose... Some say he actually sallied out and attacked the Nobunaga camp and was captured. Some say he just stayed inside the camp, but regardless of what happened, he did commit suicide. Uh, because committing seppuku, or ritualistic suicide, was seen as a, a more respectable, more brave way to die than just giving your life away on a hopeless Time struggle in the, the battlefield. The so it's quite common for people to commit ritualistic suicides in situations that are hopeless such as this. Now there is a question as to whether no, uh, sorry, Nagamasa's son also committed suicide at the same time as he did. Um, he probably did, in my opinion. But there's a, a legendary version of this story in which Azai allows his son to escape Everybody the castle and go off to live in an unknown location. And then later in history, 
Uh, Nobunaga would ask Oichi to reveal the, the location of this son to him. So this son to Nobunaga is a nephew. And he sort of, on the pretense of wanting to meet him, asked Oichi to show him where he was. And when he actually found him, he, he murdered him publicly. And uh, I believe he like displayed his head in public or something, at least in the legend. And this was supposed to be a sign of his contempt for Nagamasa Asai, because Nagamasa had gone back on the alliance he had with Nobunaga. Um, which is very unreasonable because he was pretty much in the right to have gone back on his alliance. He was going back on his alliance in order to uphold a more long-standing and more useful alliance. So, But Nobunaga was uh, probably one to bear a grudge. So, oh well. I think this guy here, Kazumasa Esono, we talked about him in a previous episode. He was the guy who was actually... Uh, he surrendered to Nobunaga uh, back at the siege of Sawayama and had his mother crucified. And he makes another appearance here. I don't know if he actually died as a result of those events or whether uh, Nobunaga took him on as a retainer. I can't quite remember actually. Feel my wrath. I don't know, he makes another appearance here regardless. So that was the legendary story that Nobunaga executed Nagamasa's son later on don't in history. But the careless. I expect more likely version is that uh, Nagamasa forced his son to commit suicide with him. Uh, I say it's more likely it's simply because more sources say that that is the case. It doesn't necessarily mean it's true, but it also seems less uh, less narrative, less like it had been made up by people later on in history. The original story of the killing could have been made up to further enhance Nobunaga's reputation as a ruthless man. It's the only reason I'm suspicious of it. To save Lady Oichi. Everybody, I need your help! So Hideyoshi's on his way in to save Oichi, good for him. Hopefully he'll do some good. And meanwhile, Nobunaga is managing to break into the castle with very little resistance, so I guess I'll just continue. Not going to be too hard. One other rumour that was started uh, to try and boost Nobunaga's supposed ruthlessness, ruthlessness sorry, <laughs> uh, after his death was that when he defeated Nagamasa Azai in this battle, he took his skull and turned it into a drinking cup and used to drink from it as a, a side of his contempt for Nagamasa. No idea if that's true. Probably isn't, but I guess it's not completely implausible. It's just one of these rumours. Anyway, I guess I'll move on to speaking about the other thing I wanted to talk about. Since the, the actual battle on the level just goes pretty smoothly. There's not too much to comment on. I do have to do lots of uh, forward and backward motion going between locations. Uh, because I <laughs> I kept wishing or hoping sorry that I'd find items so I spent a fair amount of time searching around the castle for items but, well you don't have to pay too much attention to that if I seem like I'm not doing anything anyway so as I has been defeated now Nobunaga is basically free of enemies except for two sources of hostility one is the Takeda who we've already seen and we're gonna see next week on Legend of Nobunaga again and the other is the Iko Iki now I've talked about the Iko Iki before, they were a religious rebellion which sprung up all around central Japan and the battle of Noda Fukushima, which was seen in a past episode, uh, was in my opinion a nod towards some of Nobunaga's fights against it's the Iko Iki. And now there's a very, a very major campaign that the game doesn't talk about at all which happens after this battle and before the next battle the on the Legend of Nobunaga in 1574 uh, against the big fortress called Nagashima. And this takes place, uh, yeah, pretty much the year after this siege. It's a, just another siege battle, not too different to begin with. Uh, right. But the reason I think that the game the does actually reference it partially is that in this battle, the siege of Nagashima, it was actually a fire attack and burning down the entire castle, which was the plan. And so the only reason I can think of of why they would introduce that as the plan at the siege of Odani is as a reference to that because there's no reason to believe Odani had a fire attack. Well, that's just my <laughs> my theory. I'm, I'm giving a large benefit of the doubt to the game developers there, but I like to do that, so it's okay. I guess I'll talk a bit more about the siege of Nagashima because it's quite interesting. Basically, Nagashima was this huge cathedral complex which had a whole series of fortress, uh, fortresses, sorry, around these big eco iki cathedrals. Uh, where lots of warrior monks and all of their families and children were living. And they had been harassing Nobunaga for a while and declaring independence from him and that sort of thing, and Nobunaga wasn't happy. 
and he'd actually already attempted to siege and defeat them a couple of times before. I think I talked about this in the Noda Fukushima episode, how Nobunaga marched off and was defeated by the Nagashima Iki around that time. I think it was the fourth siege, or maybe the third of Nagashima, which Nobunaga takes part in after Odani, and it was the last siege and it was actually successful. And the way he finally managed to defeat the forces inside this huge fortress was to attack by sea. He recruited a guy called Kuki Yoshitaka, who commanded a large navy. And the navy had lots of cannons, which were... I don't know, I guess they must have been imported, or whether they stole the design of European ships, I don't know. But either way, they used these cannons and uh, fire arrows, traditional fire attack, to burn the outer areas of the fortress. Because the fortress was, was built in a river delta, on a series of islands. I think Nagashima actually means something like seven islands or something, I don't know. Um, but it was built yeah, on a river delta, so it was accessible by water, at least partially. So they burned down a lot of the fortress to start with. And during the hubbub, Nobunaga managed to successfully assault other parts of the fortress and capture uh, many of the internal fortresses. I'll stop for a moment to show you this cool pay effect. The price for your <laughs> They're going to pay the price for their resists. So Kicho manages to start these geezers like coming out the ground. So I don't know how he, she did that, but takes out a few enemy troops. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was just kind of trying that move out. I'd never used it before, but it was pretty useful. Anyway, so Nobunaga captures the outer areas of this fortress cathedral and begins to siege the inner areas. He traps all of the uh, all of the members of the Iki religious sect, regardless of their being soldiers or not, inside this big cathedral and starts to starve them out. Which, to begin with, is a fairly harsh thing. He doesn't let any of the civilians go or anything. But then he comes up with a, uh, a harsher plan. The siege goes on for a few months, then he sort of realises it's going to take a while. So he builds an enormous wall around the entire cathedral complex so that they're basically completely cut off from the outside world and lose all hope. Then the siege continues another few months, but it seems they're still not going to surrender or anything. So Nobunaga decides to take a drastic step. He builds a series of wooden walls moving from the wall he's already built into the fortress so that they're connected. And then he uh, uses this to set fire to the entire system. And the fire spreads and spreads until eventually the entire complex is completely demolished, uh, demolished sorry, in the flames, Attack. killing all of the civilians. Probably tens of thousands of people would have died in this fire because this was an enormous place. And uh, Nobunaga just, just did it. It ended the conflict, but it also was a very ruthless and bloodbathy sort of thing to do. Like, he didn't have to do it. And he killed a very large amount of innocent people in the process. And it's not the first time he did this. Uh, I might have mentioned it before, he did it at Mount Hayai, which was another religious no fortress which he burned to the ground. And he was made very unpopular as a result of doing that. And he does a very similar thing here. And it won't be the last time either that he's going to use bloodbaths to solve his problems. Just um, another sacrifice to the battle. So you can see that, even though I just said earlier that there are lots of stories trying to enhance Nobunaga's ruthlessness, uh, he was pretty ruthless enough just from his historical actions. So, I don't know. It sort of lends credence to the idea that these stories would have been would have been made up after events like this, people would look back and say Nobunaga was so ruthless that it's actually plausible these stories are true and they never catch on. But who knows. This is the legend of Nobunaga after all, so talking about the legends of Nobunaga win, seems win. like a good idea. Born to win. Anyway, so I said that this level is supposed to be a reference to the Nagashima size. siege I and I think spirit. it is for the fire attack, basically, because that battle was won by burning down the castle, and at the beginning, Nobuna, uh, sorry, uh, Mitsuhide proposed burning down this entire castle. And we're actually going to see at the end of the level uh, that a fire attack does still come into the game in some way. It's a little bit confusing, but we'll talk about it when we get there. But now, let's consider what's actually been happening in the level all this time. Uh, we've gone for 10 minutes, and we've basically captured a good deal of the castle, and now I'm breaking into another mercy. section with Nobunaga. There's been very little resistance, and I've been using the tactic of opening gates, uh, forcing the enemy to run up to the gate in order to defend it, and then using a powerful cavalry here. charge through to run down any enemies in the gateway. They'd basically be forming up in a big column, ready for me to run through them with cavalry, making it very easy for me to defeat enemy units with uh, minimal casualties, and you can see I've barely taken any casualties at all. 
In fact, I'm running past some health right now and I can't be bothered to pick it up because I'd rather just uh, use my heal skills on myself to train them up. In fact, there I go, Victory I'm using it now. Nobunaga is still wearing Nagamasa Azai's helmet. The Perhaps as an insult to him in this very battle. <laughs> I don't know if I did that deliberately, I think I just couldn't be bothered to change it to something better. These towers are easily my least favourite aspect of the game because they're very hard to defeat without losing fairly large amounts of troops unless you're very careful about the timing with which you move up to the tower. It can be quite frustrating actually uh, because your, your troops are kind of paralysed briefly when the arrows hit them. So you can, you can get hit far more times than you feel you should have. But anyway, I found an item back here in this weird deserty area. I don't know if this was the section that was being talked about for the treasure, but it is a lapis lazuli, which is an extremely rare type of jewel, so possibly that was the treasure the villager was talking about back in the beginning. Uh, I don't actually know, unfortunately. We can see Hideyoshi, I was sending him on a, a wild goose chase to see if there are any items in a section I hadn't investigated, and he instead discovers Takadora Todo, Taka, uh, Takatora Todo, sorry, um, who actually later in his life would be a fairly important person in Japan. He is a He'll be a daimyo, a peacetime daimyo after the Sengoku Jidai wars are over. And he'll also serve under Hideyoshi's brother in the Korean War, like which takes one? place towards the end of the Sengoku Jidai as well. The Korean War was <laughs> a little bit of a, a strange event. It's basically Hideyoshi Hashiba's fault. He decided he was going to invade Korea once he'd finished conquering Japan much later in history. And it kind of succeeded at first, but then gradually ground down. He ended up being defeated. Um, it lasted sort of seven years or something, this is a very bloody war in Korea. Hideyoshi's plan basically was to take over all of China, Korea and Japan. We can see here Takatoro decides to, uh, to join us and unlock one of the doors, allowing Hideyoshi to quickly link up with Nobunaga in the central area, which is pretty useful. Oh yeah, before I move up, I wanted to use Exhale just to completely top off my health and mainly to train my Exhale skills. I decided to get Toshie, uh, well, get everyone now together around to Toshie and use it. In but yeah, some crazy Korean War action from Hideyoshi Hashiba. Want... He wanted to unite all of the kingdoms that shared the similar language, so this was Korea, Japan and China, basically under the Japanese banner, and he had actually proclaimed this as his ambition from very early on. Uh, when he started working for Nobunaga, he kind of had this ambition to begin with, and his success allowed him to actually try this crazy plan, which is unfortunate for the men under his command, because it would eventually get them killed, despite apparently working, for the most part, uh, to begin with anyway. So I'm almost at the final chamber. One more section to assault. It's a nice garden section with a few ornamental ponds. But now I actually have a numerical advantage over the enemy, and... Uh, as you can see, <laughs> the enemy officers are just dropping, dropping like flies. It's a very easy level, I thought, but perhaps this is just putting me in a full sense of security. Rather, uh, ready for the next level, which is going to be the Battle of Nagashino, a very famous battle against the Takeda clan, which takes place uh, two years after this battle. At this stage I was looking to waste some of my skill slots just in order to train things up. I haven't been doing that for a while. Uh, in many of the episodes I hadn't bothered to use all my skills. I uh, just because I forget how I was impatient or something. And this battle I was thinking about a little bit more because using your skills is always a good idea if you can. Because it trains them up and they get more effective. And I'm sure later in the game using all the, the buffs and things is going to be essential to succeeding. So I wanted to have a good selection of skills available. But probably... Uh, just over halfway through the game at this stage, maybe a little bit more than that. I think there are 12 chapters, but they're obviously not of all equal length, so I don't really know what that means for how far we are through the game. Uh, let me think, it's probably about 10 years into Nobunaga's historical death at this stage. So Nobunaga's still got a good amount of years in him, still a good amount of campaigns to go on. See, I'm very careful in breaking this barrier so that I can draw this as I samurai out and then actually charge through him destroying almost all the troops instantly and getting some contact with Nagamasa, so the final battle begins. Those who turn their back on obligation shall be destroyed by it. So here we go. Obviously Nagamasa, well, 
probably didn't really fight, he would have been dead by the time Nubinaga got this deep into the castle. I don't think I actually searched this chamber for items. I don't know if there were any in there. I was more worried about taking out the ranged support Show them no on mercy. Nagamasa's flank, because I thought he might constantly pester me with his arrows if I couldn't take him out quickly. Calm down and get back and I had the problem that all my units were bottlenecked in the corridor, because uh, I couldn't get enough of them through fast enough. Attack. Get a very good charge right here. Charge right through Nagamasa. And this really opens up the field because now everyone can charge out into the area and start taking out the enemies. Ready, I'm being very set, liberal with use go. of skills as I said. I use this free skill all the time in pretty much every level. I don't know if it's the best offensive skill I'm but it's just, it's just kind of useful. It takes out only a very small amount of enemy troops but it stops them doing whatever they're doing at the time you cast it and allows you to get a charge or some sort of special skill on them afterwards so you can basically stop them killing you and then kill them in return by using the free skill which is why I really like it. <laughs> you can see I have a, I'm at a loss for which skill to use. I decided to use that cool dragon attack. No idea why it's called dragon but who knows. I guess it's kind of like a dragon shooting water out of the ground. Maybe there's an underground dragon. Perhaps I just don't know much about the mythology behind such things. Maybe there's a reason for that being called dragon. I see Koroku has all four skill slots, and I'm just like, well, better waste those skill slots as fast as I can. Exhale. Nice. Your position and stand strong. Maybe I'll talk about what happens after the Odani battle for a second. Basically, Hideyoshi gets control of all of the Azai lands after this. He gets control of Odani Castle for one thing, and he gets control of all the fiefdom. Right? This gives him lots of personal income, which is very good for Hideyoshi, who is... Remember, he's risen up from being a peasant, a mere peasant soldier, a spy in some sort of regional daimyo army, the Imagawa army, uh, many years ago. Now he's a great commander, Fighters and after this battle tomorrow. he's going to have his own kingdom. So he's really come a long way, and I'm sure lots of people were annoyed by that since he wasn't of noble stock and such, but it was becoming uh, less uncommon for people not of okay, noble stock to have uh, power. For example, um, that guy Takatora Todo, who we saw earlier, he was an Ashigaru soldier who went on to become an extremely success successful ruler, especially in peacetime. So I guess there were lots of people like that. I gave my best. I have no regrets. So Nagamasa has no regrets, making him ready for his suicide, I guess. Let's see how the game portrays my it. Words alone will not end chaos. No victory cheer. Unfortunate. I guess everyone was pensive as to whether Oichi could be saved at this stage. Because remember, although in real life o Oichi has long been saved, we still don't know in the Legend of Nobunaga what's going to happen to her. Very high score on this level, and a whole bunch of prizes, so we're going to check them out. Armor of Fidelity, that sounds pretty good. Silent Secrets. That's money. So let's check out the prizes. It's Nagamasa's armor, so I can now have Nobunaga completely just as Nagamasa. Which I think would be a little bit weird, considering I just killed him and I'm stealing back my sister from him. Silent Secrets just teaches some skills. This helmet with a snake on top. <laughs> I guess it looks pretty stylish. And a fan, which makes you better at using a spear, which I guess fans do that. And here's the Lapis Lazuli, one of the rarest things. It's uh, only available from one location in the world, in Afghanistan. Very rare element. And this uh, mounted rifle unit. I've never used a mounted rifle unit, uh, so I guess I probably won't end up using it. Although the next battle, Nagashino, was famous for how many rifle troops took part in the battle, so maybe I'll try and bring a few rifles to that to make it more historically accurate. Loads of levels up, loads of extra skill levels up and learning, and some more troop affinity. Saving my game as part of the theory I mentioned in the last episode that saving stops cut, uh, glitches happening in the cutscene after, after the battle. We'll see if I was right. Oh, I was wrong. It happened anyway, so that's the end of that theory. So what's happening here? Odani's on fire. What? Why is Odani on fire? Uh, Lady Oichi! This is what I don't quite understand. It's uh, They decide to just set the castle on fire even though they've captured it. So Ichi. I don't know how that happened. Time. Perhaps they rewrote the game script for the last time, the last minute or something and just had already made the cutscene for burning no. it down. I don't know. Nagamasa! If you harm Lady Oichi, you'll pay for it! Master Hashiba? have sworn to enter the land of death together. Do not dare interfere! I leave 
them in your hands. What is I? My lord! Nagamas has a turn for the best. Ichi, you are my life. From the day that we met, you gave my life meaning. I would change nothing of our time together. My time is done, but you must continue on. Very tragic. Live and be happy, my love. <laughs> my lord! My lord! So Uichi is forced to survive whilst her lord and husband goes off to kill himself. Ichi! Only one child seen in the cutscene here, but Uichi actually had three. <laughs> as well as the male child that I, uh, I mentioned who could already be dead. Could be alive somewhere awaiting Nobunaga to execute him. Who knows? The kid doesn't seem to know what's going on. So we've burned Odani down, which as I said could be a reference to Nagashima, which the game very tactfully doesn't as mention at all. Of the Takeda clan, Katsuyori had been engaged in a series of campaigns. He had managed to capture even those fortresses that his father Shingen had been unable to do. Carried along by this momentum, Takeda moves into the Mikawa area. He surrounds and attacks Nagashino. On the verge of defeat, Ieyasu Tokugawa sends to Nobunaga for aid. My lord, I have an urgent request for aid from Lord Tokugawa. We are surrounded at Nagashino by 20,000 Takeda troops. Katsuyori, so you want to separate Mikawa from Totomi, huh? The narrative shifts to Takeda now, all of a sudden, with Katsuyori, the son of Shingen Takeda, who we saw before, who has taken over the clan and resumed the offensive. I see everyone's here. Let us begin this planning session. Sir! So we now have to deal with the same problem we had to deal with at the Siege of Noda Castle, where we've got a giant Takeda army and someone needs to stop it. My lord, I brought a man that shows promise. So here's Takatora, the man himself. I am Takatora Toto. Only you can properly understand the usefulness of my abilities. Please allow me to serve you. My forces would be strengthened with strategies such as yours. I ask for your aid. My lord. Takatora was famous later in life for building castles. As well as My being lord, a daimyo, of this course. Is the latest information on the situation. He was supposedly a very good architect and used to personally supervise the building of many castles. In the peacetime era, of course, so the, the building of the castle didn't matter so much. But there was a lot of status and wealth, etc. connected with it, so it still went on. Another interesting thing is that he probably would have been about, I don't know, like 18, like he would have been a teenager at this point in history, so we've just recruited this teenage Ashigaru soldier into our officer staff, but I guess Nobunaga does things like that. So next time, we can see here we've got the Battle of Nagashino against the Takeda army. Only 6 difficulty this time, rather than the 10 difficulty Takeda battle we faced before, so I guess it's going to be easier than last time. If, you, uh, if you're watching very closely, you will have noticed the date has advanced by 2 years. So the game cheekily had two years advance without really noticing or referencing it. it. It tends to do that quite a lot. You sort of, you imagine these events are all taking place one after the other, but no, there are many years in between them in the game. If you pay very close attention, it does say so. So that's the end of this episode of The Legend of Nobunaga. I hope you enjoyed it. Siege of Odani was a fairly important battle in Nobunaga's rise to power, just because it got rid of the Asai clan. It was... It was kind of an inevitable battle, so it wasn't very uh, dramatic or intense or anything like that. But the fact that he managed to save Oichi was pretty cool, and I'm sure Katsune Shibata will be particularly happy because Oichi, I believe, will eventually go back into marrying him. Uh, she was actually originally married to Katsuye right at the beginning of the game, which, the, well, the game doesn't mention this, but at the beginning of the historical period, she was married to Katsuye and was divorced in order to marry Nagamasa. But Nagamasa's gone. Oichi's back in the Nobunaga camp, so maybe she'll go back to marrying Katsuye again and we can all live happily ever after. It's kind of weird because in the game, Katsuye is shown as having a crush on Oichi, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if it sort of seems strange since in real life he was actually married to her. Oh well. I guess they decided not to include a divorce section in the, uh, in the game's legend because that would seem a bit depressing, just as they chose not to include a section where Nobunaga slaughters 20,000 civilians in the year that was just skipped over. I guess the game, uh, being that it portrays Nobunaga generally in a positive light, he isn't going to show the <laughs> various atrocities he may have committed. But oh well, enough about that. Let's uh, 
Look forward to next week's episode of The Legend of Nobunaga, where the Great Battle of Nagashino is going to take place, where we're going to see one of the most brutal battles in terms of the Bushido Warfare Code. Uh, you could say it's one of the greatest battles for Bushido Warfare Code, but it uh, depends how you interpret it. But we'll see. We'll see what I'm talking about next week on The Legend of Nobunaga. So until then, have a very good time. Thanks for watching. See you soon.